we are live already hello everyone hello hello this is alex koloskov at 40g friday photo talk and i have a special guest vadim Schillen, with me vadim is our instructor vadim one of the best uh, luxury uh, photographers in the world and uh, well now he joined me hello vadim how are you not bad how about you alex how's it going in confinement in uh, california right now uh so far so good staying home ah, enjoying time <laughs> thank for joining stuff. no problem man uh guys uh you you watch us on youtube so uh we monitor chat uh let me actually pop it up no let's keep it here uh make sure that well i need to make sure that you listen uh, i mean you hear us and see us well so please uh post plus if everything is fine and we'll be starting uh today well you will have opportunity to talk to uh, Vadim, to ask him questions. Uh, Vadim, in a moment, will tell you, uh, well, his story up to day, um, professional <laughs> story, I guess. And uh, <laughs> there are lo 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 tons of stories. Um, Adim, Vadim is an amazing photographer and uh, he got into, uh, well, I would say I mean, you're probably the best photographer uh, in uh, Canada. Do we have any competition in Canada at this level? I mean, in jewelry, <laughs> luxury, and all this photography. I mean, I think we're there's still a handful, or less than a handful in Canada. I mean, they would really do jewelry. I mean, there's some very good photographers. We have our different styles. I mean, it all depends on what the client is looking for. I think I have my signature style, which people come to me for. Um, I'm more of a minimalistic photographer. I'm not a person who likes to throw all kinds of stuff, make very confusing looking images. That's not my style. Some other photographer might be better suited for that. So, um, I mean, I, th I think even in North America, there might be at most maybe 10 really active jewelry photographers per se, um, that I really know of, if not even 10. Okay. Yeah. yeah, guys, I just sharing epicmind.com. Uh, this is Vadim's uh, website, uh, his company, and you can browse. You can see actually that's uh, tons of you know uh, luxury stuff like jewelry, uh, perfumes, and it's funny stuff. You have this uh, marijuana, cannabis. Ooh, why? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny. How it's a, it's a luxury there? product. It's well <laughs> in Canada, it's deemed an essential service, so it is luxury it is necessity <laughs> um actually i was gonna write a uh, actually do a vlog about how i landed that contract uh and stuff but yeah it's i work with small products with macro photography and basically somebody saw that well i had worked with at one company they ended up working for this marijuana company and he said oh my god vidim is the best person to do close-up photography he will be the man so the man went Conquered, delivered, and there you have it. So I've been working with uh, uh, Canopy Growth, Tweed, which is the largest uh, marijuana manufacturer, producer in the world, I think, to this day. And yeah, we work with them. And uh, stay tuned. I'll be probably broadcasting a video about how I landed it, the, some of the setups and all that stuff, lighting. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Nice. Actually, they look really nice. Uh, I see your style, even though it's quite so well quite different subject but still i think recognizable uh, not many uh, <laughs> shots of uh, marijuana it's like this amazing uh Vadim, Thanks, tell mm -hmm. uh not everyone uh, knows your story because well you've been on uh with us for a while and uh, you have a uh, couple courses with us uh tell in short uh how did you get into this well not into shooting specifically marijuana, but you already told us, but into this uh, luxury photography business. Uh, where you learn this, uh, when you decide, you know, to go photography, why, uh, you know, still life, uh, but not uh, pretty girls. Mm -hmm. uh, what is going on with you? <laughs> well, it's pretty, pretty simple. I mean, um, it's been 15 years. So let me start off. Hi, I'm Vidim Shilin of Epic Mind Studio. Now, um, it's been 15 years now that I've been doing uh, luxury photography. Before this career, um, I was a computer programmer. Uh, I worked in an IT company and I did photography on the side. I did event photography and I'd met a few people. I did a free event where I could 
maybe get some exposure in a certain community. Somebody came up to me, Vadim, can you shoot jewelry? I said, of course I can shoot jewelry. I can shoot anything. I'm the man. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, I went to the office uh, the week after that, picked up some jewelry, and made a big prayer to shoot some jewelry. And it took me six hours to get one shot that I was satisfied with that I can show the client. And I emailed it to him. Client loved it. And he said, OK, come back. We're going to give you a whole bunch more. After that one client, he sent my uh, images to one of the retailers that sell his brand. They have approximately 80 stores across the United States. They were my second client. And after that, I basically had enough money through that to just say, bye-bye, IT job. And that's it. So I just word of mouth, one good job to another. And I built my reputation for the past 15 years, mostly through word of mouth. Um, we have clients throughout all of North America, um, some in California, some in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Florida have some even in uh, Australia. So we've, we've been around. Um, that's really the story. I try to keep it short, Alex. You right. know, I talk a lot. No, thank you. That's, that's always fascinating to hear this. So everything starts from uh, basically being uh, self-confident enough. Do, are you self-confident, man? You, you, uh, because jumping like this I, I like, without experience, I mean, how? <laughs> I, I think my life has been to just kind of go by the skin of my pants or like the hairs of my chinny chin chin to just, you know what, if, if you don't take risks in life, good things don't happen. Um, look, even school, just for some of you out there who might be in school or do, don't do what I did. I dropped out of a university. I didn't finish my university degree because I was too busy writing other stuff and I was so involved with businesses all the time that I always wanted to be doing more and more and more. And I, I like jumping into the deep end and taking risks. And I think that's defined me as a person in life. And I always take on new challenges. I think that's where we all have to be today in these challenging times right now. If you're not willing to take risks, you're gonna be drowning at the deep end of the pool because we're in the deep end right now. But we got, we'll be talking about that today, I think. Yeah, great words. So, I, well, we can jump on this, I guess, guys. Uh... You can ask any question. I mean, we monitor uh, the chat, so whenever you feel that uh, you know there is something, um, throw it, and we'll pick it up, and uh, Vadim will answer. Uh, these times, uh, what, what, did it affect your business? Uh, how it's you know last month? How's it going there? Um, okay, well, yeah, for sure. I am gonna not lie. It's been it's been quite terrible. Um, at least in Canada, everybody around the world who's watching right now, you do realize that every government has different rules in place regarding businesses, who can or who cannot work. In Canada, it's basically stay home unless you're an essential business or you work alone. Luckily, as a product photographer, I do work alone. Um, I do have employees working. We're four people who work for my company. Um, luckily, the rest of them can work from home. I can just come into the studio alone do any work that comes in, it's shipped via FedEx because they still work, they're essential. Um, but generally, business has dwindled to, uh, my last full week of work was two weeks ago. Now I have about one or two days a week of work um, because majority of my jewelry clients, they've had to close completely. They can't manufacture, they can't produce jewelry, so they can't ship it out to me. Um, online retailers are probably the main ones that are trying to sell. Anybody who has an online business, is still trying to pump out work, is what I would see. Yeah. I see. Well, yeah, that's what happens. And I guess we need to survive. I had that video uh, where basically I was talking about, you know, how to survive uh, during these times. And uh, the main idea is to be uh, adaptive, you know, the adaptation, how, how we can change things uh, that we do. What do, you, what do you think about the future? I mean, if it will be uh, going on for a while, uh, do we have a plan on how to uh, survive, how to maybe modify what you do? Um, maybe, well, you go a completely different route. Uh, is there anything that you can share with us in terms of you know, how, how we see the future and what you're going to um, do, if it's not a secret? Yeah, it's not, it's not a uh, secret. I'll make it public. The, 
I think the main issue right now we're all facing is the uncertainty. Nobody knows how long we've we've got to stay home, how long businesses have to be shut. Again, like I just said, every country is going to have their own laws regarding opening their businesses back up. Um, we know that in the States, Donald Trump is really strong on reopening business. If you're in New York State, uh, Governor Cuomo does not want to open businesses right up. It is a case by case. Now, myself, um, I do know that certain clients are itching to open back up, and I let it be known that I am open for business. Um, you got to do that as a photographer. Let everyone know. If you're a product photographer, there is no risk of really contaminating anything with COVID-19. Talk to your clients. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I actually, at the beginning of this whole crazy pandemic, I, I made a live asking, what are your solutions? Well, talk to your clients, reassure them, tell them that it is safe to work with you. Um, now, if it lasts for a long time, sure, I don't. it's tough to predict where my money will come from. Obviously, in Canada, the government is helping small businesses a lot. For the next four months, for example, in Canada, the uh, government is going to pay up to 75% of all salaries at a company. So over here in my, in my business, I only have to pay 25% of my employees' salaries if I keep them. And for how um, long so very, do they have any, like how? Four months. Four They'll months. cover four months of salary for the time being, as far as we know. Times may change. They might change those numbers. Um, so all you have to do is show 30% less revenue versus the same time last year. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get 75%, which is a fantastic uh, plan. We're lucky to have that in Canada. Now, regardless, other solutions, what I'm doing right now is I'm working on other venues, other ways of solutions I can offer my clients. I take some days to come into work to practice new portfolio, new ideas, new lighting techniques, uh, maybe develop another niche. Stuff like that. I mean, everyone knows me as the jewelry guy. So, right. well, liquid photography, I don't do it too much, but hey, why the hell not? Why don't I learn a little bit of that universe to just enhance my portfolio? I do work with perfumes. I can't work on fashion photography because obviously I have to contact people. Um, another world that I've been exploring a lot and actually right before this whole pandemic happened was the world of video. Um, I've actually started doing behind the scene videos of other photographers, photo shoots. Um, actually, I was working on presenting to Netflix, actually a documentary. Can't go into the details. I'm under NDA on that. Mm -hmm. But doing a lot of video production is a direction I'm heading to a lot because with the high bandwidth that everyone has, video is the number one thing, I think, for me that translates naturally from my knowledge of photography and lighting and all that. There's also CGI. As some of you know, I did create a course on Photo G for Cinema 4D. I was quite into um, the whole world of 3D. Unfortunately, it's just, I can just do so much running a business. I can't be the best at 3D. I can't be the best at video. I can't be the best at managing, at doing accounting. It, it's tough to wear many hats. So I've decided to hold back on certain categories which are just easier and quicker to get to than say the world of 3D where you got 15 year old kids which are spectacular around the world in India that will do it for a fraction of the price and they already have the knowledge. So it's tough to get back in that curve. I'm, I just turned 42. So life is, is still coming. I'm getting older, you know. So you wiser. got photo G. Why, uh, yeah, yes, wiser. I like to think that. Thanks, Alex. But I have to think that education is one of the important parts of, of, of what we are as a photographer. And if you out there aren't learning new skills, aren't practicing your skills, you're just staying home and, and rotting away. So I, we're not talking about jewelry photography. We're talking about all types of product photography, still life. Learn to play with shadows. L like the trend for the last year and a half, a half of, as many of you noticed, is creating that sun-like shadow. It's in everything. Do you know how to do it? Learn how to do it. Try to see what's the secret sauce to provide that to your images. So that, that's some of the stuff I've been working on, Alex. I see. Thank you. Well, uh, learning is the key. I completely agree. You know, I uh, started just, well, it's a shame. It's just three days, but I supposed to do it, you know, for a long time. Uh, the idea is to that every uh, evening before I go to bed, I answer, uh, well, it's about uh, seven or eight uh, simple questions. 
I, I answer them. Well, I do write, but uh, you can do just, you know, in your mind. And one of the questions, what did you learn today? So basically questions like this, what did you learn? You know, what was good? What was bad during this day? Uh, and um, uh, where are you kind of happy? You know, where are you are sad? And stuff like this, uh, simple answers. And I do it for three days and it's so much, it's already such a profound, uh, I know, understanding of, you know, like day is past and I may not answer sometimes, what did I learn? There was nothing new to me. And it's crazy. I mean, it's, I was, you know, awake for, I don't know, like 12 or whatever hours. Well, not 12, <laughs> 18. <laughs> and it's like this. So it, it's super important to, you know, to put something new every day into your head. And I think it, it well, it will change your life eventually. Okay, Vadim, we have questions coming actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah from I... Alexander, jewelry photography is much different of general product photography. I mean, is it? much different, different, I guess, in terms of business prices and stuff like this. Is it different, uh, I guess? I, I think it's different. Well, I mean, it's, it's obviously different in mm. working with because you don't need much room. Uh, I started my jewelry photography business in, in a little garage and actually in the basement of my house at one point when I moved. Um, so you don't need much room. So on that side, it can cost, technically, it doesn't have to cost much, but running a jewelry business uh, jewelry photography business, you need insurance, you need a safe, you need an alarm system, you need video cameras, you need all that stuff, which adds a lot to the cost in the end. Um, the other thing is, um, let me see what, the general jeweler, I got to say, is not very wealthy in spending the money. They don't Versus other industries, I find the budget allocated to do jewelry photography is quite low. Um, you'd be surprised at some of the, the responses I get from when I send out quotes. Well, actually, I don't get responses once I send my quotes because people are going, oh, you're crazy. I guess that's what they're saying. They must think I'm crazy with my pricing. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people who don't know how to work with businesses, how to price yourself in business because you got to cost of running your company. Like I said, we're four people in this company. Those are mouths to feed, there's salaries to pay. I don't get my stuff retouched in India. It's retouched in-house upstairs over here by my retouching team. That has a cost. My rent has a cost. The salaries have a cost. The safe has a cost. All this costs money. So obviously that's the world of jewelry. Um, so like I said, I've noticed contracts that are outside of the jewelry world tend to have a easier way of getting money out of it. Um, fashion shoots, the larger clients have more money. Small clients are mom and pop shops. They don't have much profit margins versus say a shoe retailer where the markup is ridiculous. The average markup I think in jewelry is about two to three times the cost price. If the object is $100, they're, marking it, they're actually selling it at 500 or so. That's not much profit versus the, uh, say, clothing, fashion, all that world, cosmetics. It's crazy the amounts of money they make. So they have a lot more money they can put towards their advertising budgets. So hmm. in that respect, I think it's very different. I hope that answers maybe your question. Yep. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Vadim. Uh, I'm sharing the screen uh, right now, guys. If you're interested in uh, to learn more about uh, Vadim's business, basically uh, his way to, well, to do the business, there is a course on 40G. It's called How to Start Survive and Make Money as a Photographer. Uh, the beautiful course from Vadim, um, like you did it a little bit more than a year ago, maybe like two years ago. So it's relatively fresh. It's, um, uh, well, tons of information. We have great reviews uh, for the course. So check it out. Uh, uh, I think uh, someone from a team will post a link for you. But basically it's under individual courses on 40G. Okay. Uh, guys, I want to uh, make a little interruption. I want to uh, make an announcement. There will be few announcements and one of them is a challenge that I want to invite all of, uh, all of you who's watching video right now, watching this, stream or we'll be watching it in recording. Let's do something crazy. And actually, Vadim, it's uh, for you as well. You may enjoy it. Uh, let's have a shot. I mean, it's, um, uh, how we call it? It's a challenge. Face, shield, 
fine art, images that represent how you feel about the pandemic. And I have something to show you. We already started this challenge, basically. I uh, started my, uh, my wife, Jenny Larionova, and uh, take it out what we did last week. So it's a series of portraits, okay? Uh, basically with this theme. And you see, it's completely out of uh, product photography, but it can be, it can be still life, it can be personal, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's idea about how uh, do you uh, feel about all this uh, uh, pandemic time that we live in. So this is, this is what we have, you see, uh, quite creative. Okay, let's have this challenge. Uh, tag it 40G challenge on Instagram and post on Instagram. This is the best way, you know, to grab everything because it's easy to find uh, by the tag. Mm, but you will have, well, like at least a week, right? right one week next uh, Friday, we'll talk about what you do. Okay, let's have some fun. And now let's go back uh, to where we was. Yeah, we have a question from uh, VJ. Okay. Um, he asks, do you think the, that online jewelry sales might go up due to this pandemic and the fear of maintaining social distancing? Is this a good time for jewelry photographers in jewelry photography? I mean, the ideal time is not during a pandemic because people don't, a lot of people, at least in my country, don't really have jobs. Um, I don't know what the statistics are, but it's, it's quite crazy how many people don't have money or aren't getting revenues. Jewelry is a luxury item. It's not a necessity to live with. It's not like, say, uh, food or pharmaceuticals that you need to live with. So obviously, people put jewelry on the next level in, I need it. So what I think is going to happen personally, and I, I called a few of my clients um, just to see what they think. The online jewelry world is probably the world that, yes, it will flourish even stronger. Um, the whole e-commerce world, it's easier to buy. You don't have to interact with people. But the price point of jewelry, it's not going to be the super high jewelry prices. It's not going to be the, the big diamond, the, the 18 karat gold items, because people don't typically buy those super expensive items online. They go in store, the, the, the wife or the girlfriend or the boyfriend, that's how we live today, so might enjoy looking at it, especially if you're going to spend $15,000 on a necklace or a ring, you're not going to go online to buy it. You're going to want to see it in real life. So cheaper products, for sure, I think, are always going to have its place. And since the beginning of time, who is the number one client for jewelry items? Women. I'm not being sexist, it's just the truth. And they have always bought it. Post-war, there's a little period where, you know, people have to get their breath back. And after that, we start buying again. We forget about, look, People forget about all kinds of incidents. People dying in a country, everyone's sad. Um, the planet is dying, everyone's sad. We forget about it. That's sadly human nature. And I think we're gonna put the pandemic aside once we get back to our regular lifestyles and start spending money. And I think that's where e-commerce will really pick up. And clients who've not put enough money in their e-commerce stores are gonna have to switch 180 degrees and pour money into getting that e-commerce photography, at least, up to date. And not even that. The trend right now is a hell of a lot more on-model photography, a hell of a lot more product 360s, because again, like I said earlier on, video is the future. That's part of it. All of our cameras right now can basically put video and photo on the same memory card. There's no excuse that you can't do both. Some of the cameras are also able to shoot, like I know, this is a little bit off topic, but some of the red cameras out there, a video camera, it shoots every frame of its video is 36 megapixels. It's an 8K, 8K, I even forget. It's huge, huge as Trump would say. And that combined with photography, you can do photos and video at the same time with the same camera. That's what I have one of my friends doing right now actually in Montreal, not for jewelry, but for other stuff, for fashion. Say you're wearing a fashion accessory, a bag, you don't have to hire a photographer and a videographer. You hire one person with the right camera, bang, bang, you get the frames out of the, the video and they're very good. So that's a, a thing to be looking at in the future, I think. 
Right. I guess the lighting, right? You need to switch to continuous lighting. The only that was a big shift that's for me when I realized that. Okay. Yeah. Completely agree. And uh, token, it's n not exactly about jewelry photography, but I completely agree with Vadim that uh, this time and especially after everything is lifted, lots of businesses will turn into online uh, sellings, even if they were not there, uh, like restaurants or whatever. They will try at least to have a backup on, you know, next epidemic event so they can just, you know, uh, do stuff online without losing business. And I already talked to, well, we have a few, um, I personally have a few uh, contacts who was uh, last week asking me to shoot uh, their stuff, you know, for catalogs, basically simple stuff. I, I don't take it, but anyway, job is there a uh, photography product, photography job. I was talking the uh, other day. Uh, on Instagram, uh, just to followers, and uh, a few guys were saying, hey, Alex, we're getting more clients these days. Just simple product photography, because uh, lots of uh, businesses goes online. So it's, it's a big thing. I think we are lucky that we own that business. I can't imagine what would happen with wedding photography. I mean, that's... Well, but weddings, at least, it should be some weddings going on somehow. I was actually thinking that, you know, it can be online wedding ceremonies uh it can be shipped uh, equipment with the uh, you know how to put your camera i mean cameras and stuff like this so people can set up stuff shoot send pictures back but if it will be you know one year of uh quarantine that's probably will happen <laughs> eventually yeah. anyway yeah right now my, my friends that are doing a wedding they're wedding and portrait photographers or fashion photographers they're all unemployed right now um there is zero work at least in canada you you can't you can't see people. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I had one of my friends asking me, he wanted to make a, hire me to do some dating profile pics for him. And I'm like, I, I can't. I, I can't take photos of you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. Yeah, that's, that's the same here, actually. Uh, we can go, uh, and some counties, just off topic, but if you go five, mil, five miles away from where you're living, you can be stopped and uh, $1,000 fine. People were going to Tahoe and Stop the police. What are you doing here? You're going to Tahoe. Thousand dollars. <laughs> Go back to home. Yeah. So it's crazy. I mean, um, it really is. No. It's, it's, I, I think Canada, USA, it's you, 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 you will get fined. I don't know how other parts of the world it's going. I know people, I think we had uh, Alejandro from, uh, were you from Spain? Spain has been under, I have some family in Spain and it's been quite devastating. Certain countries are really. Like uh, we have some members in Italy where, you know, like prayers to all of you guys. It's been you, you've been living some real hell. And I can't imagine how bad it's been for you since it's been so long, the quarantine. Yeah. We have one question. Uh, it's a really technical question and it's in Russian. So let me try to uh, translate it. Oh, uh, Vadim. Vadim. <laughs> yeah, Vadim is asking uh, other Vadim. Uh, well, they may not realize that you uh, don't read much Russian, a little bit, I guess. So the idea is why, I mean, the idea of the question, uh, why uh, diamonds uh, look uh, yellow when uh, you shoot it with uh, strobes, at least Vadim uh, Ternovsky shooting with strobes, right? And uh, uh, use savage plastic as a diffuser and uh, diamonds turn yellow. Any idea what could be, Vadim? Um, the, the only thing I can say is there's, there's two things. There's the property of the diamond, the diamond itself can come, it, if you know diamond coloring, it starts at color D, which is colorless. It is completely transparent. There is no color cast. And it can go down to like say color G and for M, which is gonna be more yellow. So it could be that the diamonds you're shooting are of low quality, which have a yellow cast. When the diamonds have really a lot of color cast it becomes an expensive diamond again it becomes like a, a canary diamond which is a lot it's a wanted thing but diamonds you want them to be white so they're closer to d now if it's not the diamond if the diamond you know is say colored d or e even f it should look pretty much white it could be your camera's white balance as simple as that in your raw software just make sure you have your white card and just click onto the white spot or the gray card and calibrate that. That's the only thing I can guess is the problem. It's one or the other. That at least is what I think. But Vadim, do you color them? Uh, I know there is like 
huge post-production in any case, right? Uh, do you play with colors uh, a little bit on diamonds because you can turn uh, it into... Look, what, what I do, I, I'd say in what I shoot, 90% of all the jewelry I shoot is white gold. Their yellow gold is not popular, I find, in North America very much. Uh, maybe with the Chinese community, it's a bit nicer. So typically, in, I use Capture One. And in the color palette, I usually desaturate the yellow channel by almost 80, 90%. So like that, there's no yellow color cast. I even remove sometimes the red channel a little bit. So like that, you get a very nice looking gray, even slightly bluish colored diamond. Um, and in post-production, it is entirely up to the client. Every client has their own recipe with me. Um, that's the difference between me and many other competing jewelry photographers is they have their recipe, their style, and you can tell, oh, that's such and such photographer. That's such and such. I don't really have a style of retouching because every one of my clients has a different recipe. Some like their diamonds really desaturated black and white. Some like it with lots of cyan, lots of blue. Some like a rainbow of colors. And in those cases, if I need a rainbow, diamonds necessarily don't have much of a rainbow of colors. Uh, cubic zirconias, which is that copy of a diamond, it's the cheaper alternative, those typically flare out into a rainbow of colors. So oftentimes clients will give me samples with cubic zirconias, and there I can pick the colors I want. Otherwise, yes, I will add colors in post if I need to, to change them. But again, the price goes up if I have to work on each diamond facet one by one, and that's how that works. Thank you, Vadim. Uh, I'm looking at your portfolio, actually, and uh, pull up some uh, diamonds. You know, they have uh, close-ups of diamonds and uh, uh, one beautiful, uh, actually, yeah, ju just uh, like a bare diamond uh, piece. Um, and most of the colors I see uh, different uh, shades of blue, sort of. A few mm -hmm. yellow, actually, and uh, one little yep. even or uh, sort of like uh, orange or pinkish. It's uh, quite interesting. Uh, was it a drill or you did uh, some for this particular one? You, you, you see what I'm right talking here? about, right? Yeah, yeah. For that one right there, uh, first of all, that, if I recall, was a cubic zirconia. So it wasn't a diamond. I bought some cubic zirconias, the best quality cubics that you can buy online. I think they came from England. And the, I'm trying to remember how I even lit this. Um, I boosted, no, for sure, this is not out of camera. It does not look as colorful. Um, I add the blue. I like adding, for me, if you look at a lot of my images, I do like adding a bit of blue and cyan, and anybody who's followed me knows that I do like to make it cooler. Diamonds should not be warm. They're, to me, in my head, they represent kind of icy, cold. Um, and here, I think the the colors, do you see, like there's a, one fleck of yellow, one fleck of Red, those I believe might have been added in post. I see. Uh, nice. The others are like, this is real diamonds. The ones you just pulled up right now, those are real diamonds. And you can see there's a lot less colors going around like, like a rainbow of colors. Um, this is for a client in California, actually, if I, if I recall. Yeah. Thank you. Um, There's some renders in there, actually, if, uh, on my portfolio, which are not real diamonds. They're actually 3D, so they're not even uh, photos. Mm. 3D is a big thing, yeah. It's coming more and more, and yeah, hopefully we'll have some more courses coming. Uh, guys, want to remind you about one thing uh, about uh, mastering product, uh, photo uh, mastering product retouching course uh, that uh, right now uh, it's on first week of release, so you have some discount on it. You can check and uh, uh, want to tell you something that nobody knows yet. Uh, in a few weeks, uh, Artyom will hold a uh, first uh, webinar for uh, webinars uh, for uh, course students, meaning that if you join, uh, you will have time to practice with uh, materials because we provide, you know, PSD, RAW files, everything. So after that, you can talk to Artyom, to your instructor, and ask questions and actually get them answered online. Just make sure that you've seen this because uh, this price will end up in a few days. You can see the counter underneath uh, this okay Alrighty. let's move we got on we got another question from uh what was it um from the babis okay 
Well, someone's got a stutter here. So um, the question is, uh, are photography studies a necessity for being a product photographer? Alex, did you take studies to be a product photographer? Uh, nothing the official, no. Yeah, Vadim, did you take? No, I didn't yeah. take studies either. Uh, I just was a photographer. I was doing event photography before that. I've been a photographer since I'm 16 years old. So I've always been holding a camera, but working with lights. B back in the day for jewelry photography, there was not a single tutorial, not a single book out there. I had to learn by trial and error. There was no Photo G, there was no Flern or RG or whatever product out there. It didn't exist. We had to learn trial and error, and that's what it was. And that's why I said at the beginning of the, the this uh, chat is my first photo of jewelry took about six hours to come up with something that I would say, okay, I, I think it's good. And, you know, that's where my career started. So I learned on my own. Yeah. Courage plus lots of work. That's how you start, right? Just you need to be like, okay, I'll make it even if I have no idea how at that moment. But today, I think you guys are really, you guys and girls, you are so lucky to have YouTube and all the courses you can have. I mean, like I mentioned some of the sites. I mean, just on PhotoG alone, you have so much access to learn. What took me years to learn, hmm. you can do it in this much time. It's ridiculous. So it's fantastic. So go spend your money on that in the quarantine times. If you can't, just learn. It doesn't hurt. It's more tools. Right. And on the other hand of this, you know, there is a big plus that you, uh, there are lots of uh, resources uh, for you to learn but the flip side of this is that the the bar is really high i mean to, because it's for everyone so it's not just the photography anymore if you want to be uh noticeable you know you won't be just one off you need to do really something i mean something that is hard to learn because you see how it was product photography jewelry photography those days was zero educational resources, unless you pay lots of money and go and work with a photographer, you know, to learn something, right? And uh, if you can shoot at least something, it was already wow, because nobody can do this. These days, it's so easy to learn. So to be on top of this game, you need to go really creative. You need to invent something. You need to kind of do something that uh, nobody's doing. How to do this? You need to practice lots of work. I mean, you, you play with stuff, and while you're doing this, ideas will come up in your head and eventually you'll come up with something unique because this is the... Yep. You, you've got to... Even today, look, I, I, it's been 15 years I've been doing this, um, and I'm looking at a lot of the PhotoG participants nowadays. Like, I, I see some of the assignment results. It's a lot better than it was, like, two years ago or even a year ago. The, the quality of the students, their material, their portfolio material is coming up, and it's becoming great. I mean... Even I'm going like, man, I, I should start doing that again. But you don't get complacent. Don't get lazy. You have to keep on shooting. If, if you don't want to shoot, then go towards something else. Um, but one thing I got to stress, and because I get to talk in front of all of you guys right now, is it's great. You know how to shoot. But learn how to price your photography. So many of you young photographers out there are killing yourselves. You're undercharging because you just want to get that job and you're cutting the people which are making money out of it. And don't be scared to charge something a little bit higher than you think. Because in the end, raising your price from here all the way there is going to be hard. Clients expect prices to go up at most like this. You can't do that. New clients, you can bring them up. Mm. So just think about that. Just I have a business course out there check it out man because really it's it's an important thing yeah it's all about guys think about this uh vadim told you and uh his story is not unique in this term uh, that most of his clients come uh we are word of mouth so people will tell well you do a good job and they will tell somebody else and they not just sharing how good you are and they share what they paid most, most of the time it's been asked you know so this is why it's hard uh, to raise even you know it may be a new client but if you kind of start charging less you start from this and then they will even new clients may expect this stuff from you this price because they sort of know 
how it was there for, for that guy or for that. So just remember. Be careful. Yeah, be careful. Be they talk to each other. I've, I've had clients even lie. It's sad because it is a community, especially the jewelry community. I've had clients come up to me and say, hey, I heard you charge this much. And they invent prices. And I'm just there. But uh -huh. You're bullshitting. There's a lot of people will try anything to get the best price. They'll say, I'll give you 200 photos to 200 pieces of jewelry. Give me your best price. I don't give a best price anymore to no clients because it's a lie that most of them will give you the, that big contract so i give a price of saying okay here's one, one from one tip from my business course i use a sliding scale so you give me 10 photos to do i'll give it to you at price x the next 20 pictures will be at price x minus a certain discount the next batch of pictures will be at a cheaper rate like that the more you work with me, the better your price gets up to a certain point. Like that, you're faithful to me, I'll be faithful to you. Because so often people are into lying and screwing the photographer. So protect yourselves. Yeah. And you know, uh, with all this stuff that uh, they sell those boxes, you know, the shooting, uh, shooting boxes that made not for photographers, I don't, guys, don't tr even try to use them because uh, you never will compete with uh, just, you know, any guy, even the member of the team of the uh, e-commerce store that's trying to hire you. So you should uh, do something really different. You know? Yeah. Uh, questions. Uh, let me see. How do you think, uh, uh, Dmitry is asking, how do you think is there a demand, demand for product photography in IT segment if you sell an app, for example? Well product photography what do you think it's either prototype if it's some device otherwise it's probably, uh, I, I, I think that's where in the IT the, the, the all the tech sector so we're talking about anything technology related I think this is a world that's starting to see a lot of the CGI the 3d style work that's coming in Apple's using that a lot now um, because all these tech products are created already in a 3D model. So it's easy to just give the ad agency the model and they can tweak it, make it better. And it's to be quite rapid. The budgets are also quite a bit higher in tech companies. So there, we're starting to see a lot more, I find, CGI based imagery or a combination of both where you're not even sure what is what. Yep, agree, agree. We have uh, Janine. Um... Oh, she's part of uh, our VIP membership and uh, she's uh, mostly CGI artist. Uh, she can do photography, but uh, she's mostly uh, doing this. And uh, she submitted a few images uh, for Pro Club workshops, uh, if you've been familiar with what we do, you know, guys, uh, at a professional membership. It was the combo. It was uh, her CGI and uh, either her or even our uh, raw files that you know were processed. And, but it was looking amazing. So this is a great idea. And yep. I, um, by the way, uh, talking about uh, the uh, workshop Central Club, if you remember, here is a cool stuff happened uh, quietly today. Uh, we have released a new workshop and uh, this is a post-production workshop. It's super cool. Uh, it's basically uh, putting the bottle. Uh, let me show you what kind of bottle it is. Uh, like this, you know, very simple uh, bottle with the label behind. Uh, you put it on a digital background and it looks like this. So check it out if you if you're out there. Uh, it's cool stuff. Already, Vadim. So we, what uh, else do we have? Uh, we have. Let's see over here. Um, VJ asks. Okay. Uh, okay. First, I think okay, Shahin. Can you ask about new jewelry video movement techniques? Please like can be used slider. Um, I guess different motion control, ways of making the video more dynamic, I think he's asking. Um, yeah, I mean, jewelry videos or any videos in particular, uh, there's a few ways of adding motion to it. Um, we've got a motion control rig. I have, I think, eight axis control uh, arm behind me somewhere back there. Which I where I can program my camera to go in all kinds of axes, go in, go out. Eldecron? What, what brand? 
Um, it's it, what the hell? Eldecron? It's, uh, no. It's from Poland. Okay, Needle so gear. it's a, okay. No, no. Needle okay. Gear. Keep going. Yeah. So that's it. So, in that sense, I've got the dolly. It's got you know a lot of little things. I can control the focusing on it. I use that not for jewelry too much, but I use it for other products, for example. Um, that's one thing. But I mean, that's the system that we're talking about. Ten thousand dollars. It's out of the league of many people. It's still affordable versus a Mr. Moco, which I know some people like to use, which is what they use for Hollywood uh, motion tracking, for example, uh, which costs, I think, a quarter of a million dollars. Anyways, um, otherwise, using a dolly, if it's motorized, yeah, you can do a motorized dolly move on jewelry. What I prefer still doing for that kind of motion, since a lot of people don't care for 4K content still to this day, is I record my video in 4K and I give... I deliver the content in 1080p or regular HD. So you're recording a big image, but when you put it on the 1080 timeline, you can move the item around because the canvas sizes are quite different. So you can make virtual zoom ins, you can make the object move left, right, up, down, you can do all kinds of stuff in it. So that's two ways, either through a real system or by faking it using like a digital system using 4K to 1080p, uh, cropping you can call it yep. i'm showing some of your videos uh, right now and i think zoom in zoom out was made like this uh, on those videos where you know the cameras and uh was moving and guys uh, talking about this we do have uh the course uh for motion in jewelry you know it right uh, if not uh, just check uh, individual courses i'll show you it's called 360 uh, video and it's actually oh cool stuff it's on sale right now so, uh, to, <laughs> like surprisingly, right? Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, something that you may uh, pick up. This is exactly the technique uh, that uh, Vadim was uh, talking about uh, that uh, you are using 4K video and zoom in, zoom out. It's, it's way easier, uh, you know, to do stuff like this. All right. And, and just on that, just to, to continue on that sure, note, sure. like I spoke earlier on in the chat, is we're starting to get. 6K cameras, we're getting 8K cameras that actually at, at NAB this year, I think we're, we're, gonna, we're supposed to see quite a bit of new cameras with 8K on them. So all that means more room to play and crop and post. That's the fun of these huge K resolutions. Yeah, and now it's even more. I mean, the cameras are crazy these days. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you like, uh, please like it. Please uh, press that button on YouTube. It will help us uh, to do even better videos next time. So please like it. Uh, I hope uh, there are tons of cool information for you. Vadim, again, thank you for doing all this. Uh, I, I so appreciate that you found time you know, and come to the show. We're not ending. It's just about like button, guys. So uh, what else do we have uh, there? Uh, protect yourself, photographer, and get prices sorted out. Okay. Uh, about advice, one more thing, guys. I want to throw it away uh, since we have, uh, well, so many people here. About what you can do, especially during this crisis. If you cannot shoot for the client uh, and uh, clients cannot come to you or maybe ship stuff, they will try, many businesses will try to do photography, product photography in-house. They will try to do something with whatever, with those, uh, you know, shooting tents they got from uh, Amazon or whatever. You may be one who will provide consulting services. It can be done even just, you know, um, remotely. You can talk to them, you can charge money for this and uh, help them to set up little booth. Again, it's not going to kill your, uh, your photography because they're going to do it anyway. You just can help them and earn money. So it's a different, just think about it. You can sell your knowledge. I'm not talking about, you know, creating the course. No, it's just direct consulting. You can do one-to-one -one with the business and actually cost uh, quite money because it's personal work. Just an idea. Okay, yeah. uh, we have some, do we have some questions? Can CGI um, kill product photography in the future? Uh, N not yet. <laughs> I don't. I can't predict the future. I. I, I don't know. Right now, I, in the world, since I'm the jewelry guy, I know some jewelry uh, CGI artists that produce stuff, videos 
that my staff and I can't tell the difference if it's real or if it's fake. That's how good it is. I've contacted these people and to produce one video right now, it takes them almost an entire day of work for one video. I can make one, and that's for a typical 360 to do. I can do a hell of a lot more, like 30 times more in a day, if not more, if I really, I got two stations I can have if I need. So I can produce a lot of videos per day. I can produce a lot of photos per day. Rendering right now still is time consuming. Um, most jewelers design their rings in 3D. Now, if, if there's any jewelers out there, you know that your, your rhinoceros, usually a lot of jewelers use Rhino 3D to create their, uh, their jewelry models. They are for casting. So you can't just take that model and throw it into a regular uh, 3D program put on the gold material, some lights, and it's gonna look good. You have to tweak, the prongs are too big, the diamonds are not very good quality. There's a lot of work to do in post-production. And then there's the rendering, which is where the computer translates all that data and makes a real life image. All that is still far away. So in the world of jewelry and 3D replacing photography, it's still ways off. Yeah, I guess uh, maybe just for very simple uh, stuff where you can create model easy, but that's again not probably not a competitor for you. Uh, it's interesting, Vadim. Did you see this? Um, if you go to let's say Amazon and search for jewelry, uh, you will find jewelry for like uh, five, eight, fifteen dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. That it definitely looks. Uh, Jewelry uh, look crazy when you buy it. I mean, it's, it's it look really bad, but uh, interesting photography. Uh, let me try to share this. Uh, is quite good, at least uh, for that price point, which is surprised me how they manage and they probably do it uh, in a huge quantity. You know that type of photography, but uh, you know, look at this uh, thirty-nine dollars uh, piece. But well, this is expensive. <laughs> there are way less. Okay, fifty-nine. Uh, well, anyway, but the photography, right? It, it's it's quite good. What do you think about this? I mean, what is that? Is it rendering um, photography? I, or? Don't, uh, I don't see it. Okay, so let, let me throw one second. I'll I'll, I'll throw the it. yeah and the exact link. So okay, so first off, I actually shoot for one of these people. <laughs> okay. That sell on Amazon and they sell their jewelry for thirty dollars a piece. My rates are higher than $30 a piece per photo. They sell a lot of pieces. So for them to spend the money is worth it. If you can sell a hundred pieces of the jewelry and your rate is whatever it is, they're making money, I'm making money. And they will have, the, they will have some companies out there that are gonna say, I want you to give me, I'm willing to spend $5. Well then I tell those people when they come to me, I don't charge $5, go elsewhere, and they will find somebody. These people often can find price points like that. The photography is done, it could be in, a, in an apartment in, in, in Canada, in the United States, and it's shipped overseas to retouch. As I said earlier on, my team, I employ local workers. One of my employees has been working for me for nine years now. I'm proud of having local people work for me. It's not about just making money, it's about running a business, being happy and proud of what I do. So yes, if I go to India, if I go to China, I can get stuff retouched for $2 a piece. Will it look amazing? It will look overly retouched. Often stuff retouched in China looks over the top, like the, the thing will look fluorescent, like the, 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 the gemstone is often too bright. It, it looks like a cartoon. That's the retouching style of overseas. So that's, their, that's how they get the price point. They shoot a whole bunch, they don't know what they're doing. If you got to see the file before retouching, all the stones are replaced one by one. They have like, we call it slugs. So they'll have all the same copy paste to diamonds everywhere. They'll rebuild all the gold. It doesn't even look like the original photo. So it's really, it's all done in retouching in a sweatshop overseas. It's sad to say, it's like clothing. It's done in a sweatshop overseas. Wow, nice. So you work for this uh, leaf hell uh, particular? Wow. No, no that's no, not, not that one in particular. Uh, no, I see. Because they have good photography, <laughs> whatever I can say. Yeah. Uh, awesome. 
Well, guys, we are approaching to one hour uh, of our time. If you have uh, some really cool questions for Vadim, uh, please ask, because we are going to uh, wrap it up. Uh, remember about uh, the uh, challenge, okay? Uh, face it, uh, again, face shield fine art, okay? Uh, photo challenge, and that uh, you create something that represents your feelings and uh, whatever everything that you have uh, during this time of uh, pandemic and submit it on Instagram, 40G Instagram with uh, 40G challenge, one world tag, 40G challenge. Okay, we'll pick it up and we'll have a cool um, uh, Friday talk uh, reviewing your stuff and, you know, laughing at it and, you know, doing stuff like this. You see what uh, we did, right? I, I was showing it. Uh, we did with Jenny, uh, with my wife here in the studio. So not only product photography. Alrighty, uh, let's see. Uh, what do you mean? Do we have some nice question do you want to answer? I want to think with product photography. I think video or image, you already talked about this a lot. Uh, how to ask high price if you are still a beginner? How to ask high price if you are still a beginner? I mean, I'm not saying ask for a high price, but you've got to do a market research. You got to find out what's the going rate. If, if the going rate, I'll just throw a number. If the going rate is $50 for an established photographer, don't go charge $2 for a photo. It makes no sense. Already half the price is already asking to be making no sense. That's part of the reality. But also you have to know the cost of doing business. How much does it cost you? How much money do you want to earn a year Obviously, as a beginner, you won't be working every day of the year. So there's a lot of extra things you got to know. But a quick way of finding out is just try to find out what other people are charging. Don't cut them. Don't charge 25% of what they're charging. It makes no sense. Half, half the price is at least the minimum to charge. I have a competitor in my city that tried to contact all my clients and said, I'm a quarter of the price of Vidim. And if Vidim goes lower than me, I will go even lower. It makes no sense. Why do that? He's killing himself. It, it, you don't do that in business. It's about you're there to make an honest living. And that's it. So that, that's where I would say on that. Yeah, it's like killing ecosystem that we are, you live in on a business wise, right? You, you basically you kill yep. people around, but then boom, you, you, you're going to die by itself. Guys, if you want, guys, if you want to learn about uh, ways of uh, pricing your business uh, and uh, basically ways of Vadim, no, ways of Vadim doing this, check out uh, his course. Vadim has an amazing course called How to Start, Survive and Make Money as a Photographer on uh, 40G. Basically, all those questions answered there. You know, uh, Vadim was, uh, Vadim made this course specifically targeting those who enter the, the industry, you know, uh, enter the uh, professional photography business. All tons of stuff. It's an amazing course. Uh, check it out. Uh, this is something that uh, it will definitely help you. Oh, by, by the way, just one last thing. I just, I just saw you sent me the link to that product uh, that, that you saw on Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you look into the actual zoom in, the retouching is so fast and badly done. The chain goes through the cheap little uh, stick, sticker uh, gemstone. It's not even erased properly. It's just been slapped on. It's like I said, it is sweatshop quality. Everything is, re is drawn on. Everything is over the top, badly done. It is. It's hilarious. I'm looking at it right now. I'm like, wow. So it <laughs> was not wild. your photography. Okay. <laughs> no, no, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> but that's what people get. You get what you pay for. And some people say, you know what? I'm paying so cheap. Who cares about quality? And that's the problem. We have to educate our clients that quality is important. I, at least that's what I try to do. Yep. Alrighty. Micro I think that one last yeah. question in uh, Russian. Yeah, uh, he meant that uh, is there is um, competition between video and uh, image in, in product. product photography. If uh, and he asked is, is if video will um, actually overcome phot photography and it will be only video. We probably answered this right. It will be somehow when, more. When end up being just video because it's going to be get getting to the point i mean look, don't get me wrong there's some problems with videos still related to frame rates 
you can't freeze frame. Like for example, if you're recording at uh, 23 frames or tw 24 frames per second, you're shooting really at one 50th, 160th of a second. Can that freeze motion? No. So there's some limitations. If you're recording at the 60 frames a second, your actual shutter speed is one one twentieth of a second. So you still can't freeze action. So there's some things video can't do perfectly well, but there's ways around it. And eventually I think it's gonna get there. Uh, Adim, did you hear about Adobe Dimension software? Never did, no. Yeah, no, that no. is a question. So. Um, that's something new, discover new dimension design. You know, uh, I have no idea what the product is, but I think uh, they're just trying to enter that market of, you know, 3D rendering, Adobe as a company. So probably it's not as good as uh, like 3D Max or whatever, you know, the yep. good, well-established companies. But if you start in it, it may be an easy way to start with because they usually make it, uh, well, something simple at the beginning. But anyway, um, Guys, thank you for being here with us. I think it's time to wrap up. Uh, we all have, you know, families. We all have work. And Vadim, Vadim, thank you so much, man. It's such a pleasure um, talking no problem, to you man. all the time. I, I, I wish we can do it more often. <laughs> uh, all good, man. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys, for having uh, listened to us and my dribble of blah 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 that I tend to do, but enjoyable nonetheless. No, thank you, thank you, Rim. It's 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 an amazing, uh, and uh, thank you, everyone. Again, if you like this video, please like it, please share. Maybe uh, somebody uh, will uh, love to see uh, what we are talking about. You know, to hear, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to stay um, to get notifications when we go live next time. Basically, it happens every Friday, 1 p.m. Pacific time. But if you subscribe and uh, make sure that bell is on you will receive notification once we're live and you can watch it, you know, uh, from anywhere. Uh, people saying uh, thank you. Yeah, so stay safe, everyone. Again, big thank you to Vadim uh, because of all this amazing talk, uh, amazing uh, and, uh, uh, how do you call it, optimistic, optimistic view of the future, which is not easy uh, to do uh, for many these days. Okay. Time to say goodbye. Bye, guys.